for here at Oshkosh. Second day, air show going on behind us, but we had to talk about props here for a little bit. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Elena Lewis, who's going to tell me a little bit about Culver props, but let's first go way back in time to your family history with these. Go back to the beginning of the whole deal. Okay, well, we started with my grandpa. He grandpa. was a crop duster, and um, then he lost his medical. So he went ahead and designed his own airplane because he had his mechanical engineering degree. Um, from there, he brought it up to Oshkosh and got to, you know, display his work and people liked it and they really liked our VW engine. So we um, started selling a few of those. Um, he wanted a little steeper takeoff, so he designed a prop speed reduction unit. Um, and with that prop speed reduction unit, he called Culver Props and had them build a specific design for him, something with a wide blade, more of a paddle blade look. And then he called to order one a few years later and they said, well, we're out of business. We've shut the doors. And so when they did that, dad and grandpa got together and said, well, we've got this much money in the bank. Do you think they'll take it? And so they called them and they said, absolutely. And they trucked the whole company down from Pennsylvania and now we're here. Is that right? And yeah. here is uh, Missouri. Is that yeah, right? We're, we're in, in Missouri. We're in Rolla, Missouri. Rolla, Missouri. So today you're Culver Props and I love this display you've got here because a lot of people, they only see the magic. Yeah. The stuff that's the finished work and maybe, uh -huh. the, maybe that's all they really need to see. But I enjoyed no learning how these are done here. You just starting mm -hmm. off with some planks of wood. Walk me through the process here of building a prop. Sure. So it's about a six day process start to finish. Um, we get our wood trucked in from Kansas City and every every pattern has a template. So I'll pick out what the customer needs. I'll take that template and lay it just on a on a single board and I cut it out and then we glue it up. They have to stay in the press for 14 hours. Um, so then the next day I take them out and I put them in our tracing lathe. Um, so I'll do a rough cut of each blade. I'll set That's the pitch. That's what this is right here? Yep, this is it's your a, rough cut. If the camera can't tell that, it's like a little series of grooves mm -hmm. down, the, down the prop. And then it, I do, I set the pitch and then I do a final cut of each blade that puts it very, very close to exactly how it needs to be. Um, and then from that point, I'll go ahead and I'll cut all of this out with the bandsaw. So oh, okay. all these chunky things get taken off with the bandsaw, the ends get cut close to the diameter, and then I go ahead and it's pretty much hand sanding from that point. Is that right? So um, I'll use a belt sander here and you just take it down to just just enough to get these ridges out. It's uh -huh, pretty okay. much perfect. So then I do an 80 grit orbital Let me stop sander. It's pretty, the, the rough cut is pretty much the shape it needs to be. Is that yeah, what you meant? Okay. Yeah, I don't want to change this profile at all. All I'm wanting to do is take these ridges out. Okay. So I do that with mostly with the belt sander and then I come back and do an orbital sander with about 60, 80 grit and then I'll go back and polish it with some about 110 grit and then it gets three days of varnish. All right, so a lot of people like me included too go, well, you're, you're using a machine but you're, you're holding the machine by hand. This right. is not a CNC thing at all. No. And, and, and you gotta, and you gotta have a very good shape here. This isn't just making it smooth. This yeah. has to retain its shape. How do you make sure that you're doing that right? Well, um, most of it is, well, by eye. And then I start balancing at this point. So uh, you just, it'll tell you if you've taken too much off or not when you go to balance it. It'll say, well, you've taken a little too much off of here because one blade is heavier than the other. So then okay. you go back and you correct that. But generally, as long as you just stay with the profile and don't don't make any dips or don't flatten out anything, it's an eye thing. I would say I have a... You must have I some must good have, eyes. <laughs> because I, I have a hard time answering that question, too. I'm like, well, you just look at it. You just know. You just <laughs> I can know. tell you for sure, Alina. If I looked at it, that would not be enough. So you have good eyes. So, but yeah, that's... So you're not laying a whole series of templates or anything? You're no. just there's a lot of companies that do. I see them do it yeah. in their videos. That's just not how we do it. I'm you just do very careful eye, huh? not to You're take too much off. You're pretty good at this then, because the finished work is great. <laughs> so here you. we go from planks to rough cut to sanded mm -hmm. to fine, fine, fine sanding sanded. Uh -huh. to polishing. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems so simple when you say it that way. It's just easy I'm as that. I'm pretty sure if I did this, it turned out to be a lot of toothpicks. But um, <laughs> fortunately, I don't do that. So yeah. good for you. <laughs> Thank you. And how many props can you put out at that level? That sounds like a lot of work to do one. It is. Um, I put out about 120 a year. It's nothing huge, but it's a lot of really interesting, interesting props. These go on the Aerolite 103. Okay. Um, I just went down to the Rotec radio booth to see one that I put on a Hats biplane. Oh, yeah, So it's cool. so exciting to actually see them on the planes yeah, here. Yeah, you probably don't get that I don't. feeling too often. No, I ship Off them all over the world. and never see it again. Yeah, I ship them all over the world, and I normally don't get to see them in person. Sometimes I get pictures, sometimes I don't. What are all these for now? Here's a whole selection of different kinds of props. These are all finished now. They look great but they all look different. Sure, so this is one that Lee Fisher had me make. He um, did a replica of a Demazel um, propeller. So he, he sent me a picture and said, now I'm gonna put it on a modern day engine, but I need it to look like this and I am <laughs> gonna fly it. So it has to be legit. So I took it and I, I designed this pattern for him. It's the first one that I've ever made on my own, my first pattern. Is that right? Yeah, so I bring it every year. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess you would, it's beautiful. Um, and this is something that would go on a half VW, something okay. um, like legal eagle with a half VW on it, uh, 54 by 20. Um, this is another one that I designed for Lee. He was doing a Curtis headless pusher, so this is a design for that. Um, this is another half VW. It has square tips just to show. Okay. We don't do square tips very often. Round tips are generally a little bit more efficient and less noisy. Um, but for some of my faster planes that are limited on diameter, I like to do a square uh -huh. tip because the more blade area you can give them, the better. Even if it's just a tiny little bit, I do it. So. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of action is happening out here in these these final inches, aren't yep. they? Yeah, the last two thirds does the most work on yeah, the propeller. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people don't know that. The, the rest of it's mostly structural, actually. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, you want a consistent pitch, and it all counts, but the last two thirds do the most work. And so when I measure my pitch, I do measure my pitch out here oh, okay. because this is where it is most efficient. Okay. Um, this one is one of my. Uh, ones that I make the most. This Is actually right? has a great story. So we're about the fourth owners of Culver Props. But Mr. Culver himself made this pattern. His neighbor had an SE5 and he needed a prop for it. So Mr. Culver made this um, more scimitar profile because the SE5 is, has an iconic scimitar profile sure. on its um, plane. So I went ahead, or so I had that in my patterns and I actually found that story out up here. One of his friends came and told me the whole story and I'm like oh I'm so glad I found that out because finding the history out of your business is, is great I love it so it's what I use for all my Lycomings and my Continentals oh, okay. um, they, big boy. This is a big boy prop. Yeah, and it does so well. I just never get them back, and they, I never have them on the shelf. People say, don't you have one laying around? I'm like, I'm sorry, they, they don't come back, and if they do, they're gone within a week. It's just my most popular my most popular one. How many different patterns do you have to keep track of? I have about 300 total. 300 different patterns? 300, yeah. Wow. So I have a really wide variety of what I can make for people. So that's like, What do they have to tell you so that you can even begin? Sure, so most of the time I go with um, about how many horsepower it is, what speed they expect their airplane to go, so cruising, mile per hour, and RPM. Okay. Those are what I use to base my pitch on. So cruising, because that's where you are. Most of the time you're cruising, so those are the numbers that I use to pick the pitch. Um, so I put those into my prop pitch calculator, and it'll tell me what pitch you need to have. And then when I decide the diameter, I'm looking for things like you may have ground clearance issues. So then I take, that's the first thing I take into consideration. And then I see how far I can go before your tip speed um, is, is within what I like to have. I don't like to go over 850. At about 800, your tips start getting noisy. And then at about 900, they're inefficient. 900 so, what? Um, feet per second. Feet per second of prop movement. So, okay. Yeah, your tip speed. So. Um, I normally like to, and if they want that extra diameter, because of course the bigger diameter you have, the bigger column of air you can pull on, and generally the better performance you can have, um, I, 
I will let them turn up to like 8.50 on takeoff because you're not there very long. I see. Um, but I generally like to keep it a little bit below that. And your so. calculator helps you arrive at that number. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. it does that. I know the formulas, but it's awful handy to punch <laughs> well, yeah, it in. You got, you got the great eyes we talked about. It's a so. lot faster <laughs> to do it. So. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what actually goes in. You said you buy the stuff from a nearby supplier and uh -huh. you get that. But what, what, I mean, it's a wood prop, but it's beyond wood. What really is going on here? Sure. So we do grade A select top of the line wood um, and no knots no cracks no anything if I don't if if even if I just look at I'm like mmm just doesn't look right I'll scrap it okay. so but what I use is maple this is maple maple um, okay. the second color is birch and I like to do maple and birch because of the color contrast and it's yeah, really it it's really pretty is that just a visual um, or is that yeah. also structural yeah they're both equally um, wonderful airworthy woods okay um, and then we use mahogany sometimes. Mahogany is a lot lighter. Also, when I do a special prop, um, like anything for my World War I replicas, like a Fokker triplane or something like that, they are iconic for having a, a um, dark light, dark light laminations. Uh, okay. So I'll do a mahogany and a maple laminations oh, yeah, to replicate quite that. Quite a bit of difference that axial profile. So I just did a prop that went to a museum in Canada for their Fokker triplane and we wanted it, you know, to be as original as possible. So I designed them a special prof or I designed that profile for them in the diameter and pitch that they needed for their engine and did the maple and mahogany mix and it was beautiful. Cool, <laughs> cool. Well, uh, congratulations on all of that. I'm really impressed with your abilities to do this, Elena. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and the Culver brand, I mean, as long as I've been in aviation, there has been Culver props. So yeah. I'm so glad you're keeping it alive and doing very well with it. Yeah, we bought the company in 2000 and it's it's been great. And how many props have you personally made? Oh, Dad and I figured it out before we left. Probably, I've carved over a thousand in the carver, and I probably made start to finish about 800. Is that right? Wow, that's a... <laughs> so. I'm not sure I know anyone else who can say that, so good on you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's, uh, I've asked you a lot of questions, but people will undoubtedly have ones I forgot to ask you. Sure. Why don't we send them on the web, Elena, so they can find out more and get in contact with you? Well, we're at culverprops.com. Okay. And then we also have a Facebook page, and I post little pictures. I try to do it daily of making the props in process. Um, I also have an Instagram page and kind of a YouTube page, but I'm not <laughs> real good at it. <laughs> well, we can find all that through the website address? Yep, it's all on the website. Very good. Mm -hmm. You can find more about, not so much about Culver Props because I just <laughs> learned a lot more right now, but you can find all kinds of airplanes with Culver Props on them and a lot of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Elena Lewis and myself here at well, EAA so Air Venture Oshkosh.